been uh, very busy. I went uh, on eBay and I've been hunting up all kinds of stuff here lately. So uh, I'm just going to start going through everything we've got here. Uh, pick this up. It's a shrink roll. Um, 2% shrink, it says. Uh, it's metric. I could have swore I was ordering an inch roll, so I'll have to double check and make sure that's right. I may have accidentally ordered a metric tool. God forbid. Um, but at any rate, I mean, that's another one. I'll set that aside. I'm going to have to just kind of keep moving things out of the way as I go, I think, because there's so much stuff here. And uh, I think it was maybe the last last tool score I put up. You know, I have these little uh, measure, tapering measure parallels, or uh, for like measuring bores. Um, I bought a little kit, it was a box, but it was missing like three of the bars. Well, sure enough, the whole kit came up without the box, of course, but it was a complete set. And I ended up winning those, so now I'll be able to, uh, I think the ones here are actually better than the ones that are in the case. So I'll probably switch these out, put these in the case keep all the best ones and then probably sell the other ones. Uh, I found a guy that has a surface grinder so I may end up uh, you know filling in the set and then selling a complete set. But anyway so that's for the little measuring bars and put a bunch of these things here. Let me set this off to the side. Okay here's the other thing my lathe when I got it it only had two of the four wipers for the ways well I found a whole set here uh, they're all pretty dirty and nasty probably should replace the felt on them the rubbers there the metal shield or a little I don't know older whatever you call it plus all the screws so that's enough to uh, put them all back onto the carriage and uh, I got a couple of extras I guess now and I may on the, some of the later lays, I think they had them on the tailstock also. Well, I may fool around trying to put these onto the on the tailstock. And then uh, another thing dealing with the lays, I found some of this uh, CMD Extreme Pressure Lubricant. So that's good for uh, like dead centers and uh, things that are, I don't know, the steady rest. Put this on there. Uh, this, I don't know what it's made out of, but it's good for all kinds of stuff here. It says lathe centers, grinding centers, milling machine centers, screw machine centers, steady rests, tapping, a whole bunch of other things too. Uh, probably you could use this for an assembly lube too. It talks about for like, uh, like die work, stamping, and all that sort of stuff, drawing metal, uh, anything that's got a lot of pressure. Uh, this is a good lubricant for that. Anyway. Uh, here's one thing, and uh, we're having to deal with the postal service a little bit about this, but I, I bought this little grinder, but uh, when it arrived, the box was pretty beat to heck, and they had broke the leg off this thing. That, that's a shame. I, I mean, this thing is probably almost 100 years old or more, maybe, and they, you know, just out of recklessness, they broke it. But uh, the bearings in are in excellent condition. And it's got the two pulleys on it, so I would, I'm not quite sure what's going on because they're both fastened to the shaft. I would have thought that one of these would be a tight pulley and the other one would be a loose pulley so you can put it into neutral, but you know, I, I don't know. Uh, if anybody else knows anything more about that sort of stuff, let me know. It's got the oilers on here. That's yeah, all in pretty good shape. Uh, we may have to, we may have to figure out how to fix that though. But I may end up having it for free. I'll, I'll probably get refunded, I would think. Uh, that was like $45, I think. That wasn't too bad. And for my Atlas lathe, I've been sorely needing one of these books here, but this is the lathe operation and machinist table for the Atlas. And it, it deals with all kinds of uh, things in here. Everything you would need to know about running one of these lathes and just a lot of good general information. Uh, you know, I still don't think I actually have the uh, soft bin how to run a lathe book, so that'll be, I suppose, on the shopping list too. And while we're on books, picked up this one here. These are reprint. Uh, I believe this is an original, but this is a uh, this is one of the later ones. For some reason, Atlas 
very early on, I, I don't know when, but you were able to do uh, metric threads on it, but the information on how to set up the metric threads wasn't included in the book for like 15, 20 years, I think, or something like that. Uh, this one's got a 1955 copyright. That's the, the last copyright on here. Anyway. So, back to this one here. Uh, this one's uh, all kinds of things about lubricants, uh, like line shaft type related things, uh, belts, how to lace belts, different ways, gluing belts. Uh, there's, uh, I haven't gotten too far into it, but there's a lot of stuff I think in here on, on babbitting, and setting up babbits, and of course they've got all these really nice little line illustrations. I love seeing these drawings that they do in these things. It's a pretty nice one. How to? I think these are. I haven't read this yet, but I, these look like cores. You can see here. If I can get you close enough, see the little lines across that one there. Well, those are channels for the grease in a bearing. So I think you would put that core in. You could actually cast in those uh, those grooves for the grease to to flow in. You know, there's all kinds of interesting information in there. And then uh, I haven't read any of this book at all yet. It's a treatise on stair building, so this really has nothing to do with machine work, but, uh, you know, my closet wood, woodchuck habit is getting a hold of me, but uh, it's just everything you would ever imagine about how to lay out stairs and, you know, making curves and doing the handrails and all sorts of things that would be uh, very difficult for a person to, you know, figure out, well, this was all worked out a uh, very, very long time ago, hundreds of years ago. You know, people have been building stairs a long time. Anyway, promises to be a very interesting book. Okay, what else we got here? <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> excuse me. I have a set of gauge pins. It goes from, uh, I believe, 11 thousandths to 60 thousandths. A, mi a set of minus pins. This is a set of uh, minus pins that are 61 thousandths to 250 thousandths. I bought these from Shars. Uh, we hope the accuracy is as good as it should be. Uh, they're all still wrapped. I haven't opened up anything and checked it out yet. Um, but if one of these things is off, I don't. You can buy another one. I don't think they would be very expensive anyway. But I, I think I got something I need to measure on my my mill anyway. I need to figure out the slot. Uh, or the keyway on the uh, on the arbor. Excuse me. Where my mind is today, I can't think. Anyway, and I picked up some of these, brand new. On my lathe, I have a an OXA size uh, tool post, which is actually too small really for my lathe. But I have a, I think a little video that talks about the little riser block I made for them. Uh, but these things are really cheap. I think they're twelve dollars a piece for these for these blocks. So I bought a couple of those. You probably never have too many of these, you know. You know the, all the common things that you would have set up, you can just leave in the tool holders. Then I I picked up this here, and I kind of accidentally ordered the wrong thing. But uh, on the Atlas lathe, 11 16 is a very common size for like the, the tail stock, um, all the change gear, the bolts or the nuts and bolts and stuff on the change gears are all 11 16 which is kind of an oddball size. But uh, anyway, so this is an 11 16 here, and this is a 7 16 square, uh, which would be like for like the tool post and I think the carriage lock, but it's 3 8 on the lathe, so. I actually have the wrong size square here. So, if anybody's, these things are just ridiculously expensive on eBay. It's like 25 bucks for this one wrench. If anybody has one that's 11 16 3 8 square, I would trade for this if they need a, one of the 7 16 But anyway, alright. So then I ordered a lot of tools here that, you know, a lot of this stuff, I'm not exactly sure what we got here. A lot of them are like, you know, tool bits, and these are actually kind of interesting, these two here in particular, because these are wood turning bits. So this will be sort of handy stuff for the uh, you know, pattern making projects, although this one is poorly 
or deformed. And this one's not that great either, but you know, that's all right. We can, we can fix that. And it came with a whole bunch of these, which I'm not exactly sure what they are. I haven't checked them for hardness or anything to see if they're actually hardened steel. But there's a whole bunch of these things in here in a couple of different sizes. And some of them, it looks like the person has ground them into like tool bits, like that one there. Got another one right here. No, is that one we draw? No. Oh, here's one, of course, at the bottom. It's kind of a V-shaped sort of a thing. Boy, that's a really ugly, really ugly grinder. That wouldn't cut anything very well. Anyway, here we got a couple of tool blank bits. A little bit of a rust or grease or something on there. Yeah, it seems like rust. And they're, you know, they're beveled on the one end, so you got a little bit of relief where it gets in. We got all these here. There's four more of them. Well, it's three of that size. This one's a five sixteenths. This is probably three of them at quarter inch. And some more really unknown things. It's got a little hole here, and this one's tapped. I'm not sure what that hole is. And in fact, this has even got a number on it. It's like in a little recess in stamp 32. Anyway, so, I don't know, this is just kind of like a machinist junk drawer lot. And then we got a couple of these. They almost look like parallels. Well, they would actually make fairly decent parallels. They seem pretty close. We'll have to measure them to make them sure. There's no tool bit. And then this is, looks like a clamp for something. I have no idea what it was for, but it looks like it was made very nice. All right. Oh, it also came with this. This is a, it's a piece of copper bar. Got a hole in the back end. It's chamfer here, and it's got it's like a tool bit brazed into it or soldered in. I'm not sure what that's for. It almost looks like somebody's trying to build like a, you know, if you had a, a holder to make a scraper, like a pole style scraper. But who knows, you know. Yeah, we got a little bit of shafts. Some of these things kind of almost fit into this stuff, but I don't know, sloppy. Maybe the guy was holding it in like a, a boring bar holder or something like that. You know, yeah, see this one's another one that's kind of been ground on a little bit of a, a V-shape. Maybe like make it form to it or something. There's a little stub. Piece of steel, like, a, I don't know, three quarters of an inch or so. There's a little piece of uh, phenolic rod, about the same size as that. That's kind of neat. And this is really probably the main reason I bought this lot was uh, two carbide cutters, two brazed carbide cutters. One still on the wax. This one looks pretty good, except the tip looks like it's maybe gotten chipped just a hair. I'll have to get a diamond lap or something. Work on that. So I sent Tom Lipton a message the other day if he could send me some stickers. So here's a pl free plug for Tom. Put one on my my other thing here. I bought this set of uh, uh, clamps from my mill. Yeah, they seem okay, but I mean, the way this stuff is made, uh, yeah, they're kind of locked together, but they don't really, I may have to go in here and drive myself nuts trying to correct this and make them, make them as, as they were intended to be built. But at any rate, they weren't too expensive. Uh, this was another good good score here. It's a brown and sharp uh, end mill holder. It's a bolt of 7 8 and it's brown and sharp 10. So keep an eye out for this size tool. Uh, this is, I want to say, like a Morris Taper 5 is a little bit bigger than this because I see them all the time. Morris Taper 5 to brown and sharp 10. Interesting thing about the brown sharp 10 is all the other sizes I think are like, uh, is it a half an inch per foot or something like that of taper? But this is not. It's very close to that, but it's a little bit different. I don't, I don't understand why, but uh, it is. It's not the same. It's not the same taper as all the other, all the other ones. Anyway, moving along. Uh, I bought a couple of lots of uh, milling cutters, 
some of these are good, some of them are not. Uh, there's a whole pile of them here. Uh, there's a few of them that are actually really, really terrible. <laughs> uh, probably most of these will need to be sharpened. This is the other reason why I kind of am thinking about trying to find a, uh, a surface grinder that then I could I could do my own sharpening. But here's some more cutters. A couple of nice big ones alone. It's kind of chipped pretty good right there. Anyway, you can never have enough of these things. What else we got? Oh, it's hiding back here. So, uh, again, on Tom Lipton's sort of uh, tutelage, I bought myself a Nova arm with a magnet. And this one was a pretty good deal. I don't remember what size this arm is, and of course it doesn't say on it. But, um,. It was like 80 bucks. Came with a magnet, the arm, and uh, an MHC uh, uh, dial indicator, which seems to be working pretty good. It was kind of funny when I first got it. It was, you get down here to the last end, it was not working very well, but I kind of played with it a little while, exercised it some, and well, it seems like it's working now. There's that. this out of the way somewhere. Put it on the floor. Alright. What's it? Alright. And I found these. There's two of them. Here's one. Here's the other one. And these are lathe dog holders uh, made by Brown and Sharp. I believe. Yeah. Brown and Sharp Manufacturing Company, Providence, Rhode Island, USA. And they're, they're cast iron. These were really cheap. It was like 20 bucks for the both of them. Um, and uh, this one here, it goes from a quarter inch up to an inch and a half. And this one here uh, goes from quarter inch up to two inches. And I don't know if anybody knows anything about these, but in the back, it's got these little pockets it looks like something should go in there, uh, but I really I have no idea. Maybe uh, I don't know. Maybe you could set your centers in there, the dead center and the light center or something. I, I suppose, but I'm just guessing. And the funny thing is too, it's got a this little flat piece of metal screwed onto the front. I guess that's where it kind of registers, but I'm not exactly sure why it wasn't just cast in there. Although it's undercut here. It's why anyway so I got the two of them um, I, I definitely want to keep this one but I'm you know I'm not I'm not really married to this other one I might might make a nice project for uh, you know like a reproduction or something probably I'll end up doing that but if anybody wants you know reproduction racks you know we'll probably do them in cast aluminum or cast iron I have to figure out where these part because it's, uh, hmm, I don't know, I'll have to do a little bit of study on it. It almost looks like these are, I can see a parting line right along there, so maybe there was some core work that happened on the outside of this, I don't know. Uh, it's pretty interesting little casting. So anyway, set these back. And then for, uh, for Jay Kilroy, uh, you know, his his disease is, is, is spreading. So I was at the local thrift shop a week or so ago and uh, found this. I told the I told the guys that I was looking for machine shop stuff and they said, Oh yeah, we, I think we got something. So he hauled this out. I've been looking forever for you know, a decent set of uh, thread pitch gauges, and it just so happens that there was one in here. So, here's that, what it goes, uh, does it say, what the range is? Let's see if we can find what the course is going on. There's a, it goes from 80 to uh, 4, I think it says. 4 threads per inch, you know, that's really, that's really coarse. So anyway, PEC, I guess that's the brand, but I, I don't know. I don't know who PEC is. 
It's got little locks. It even says lock on it, turn it this direction, sort of in with an arrow. Pretty nice. These things, all day long, if you're looking at a Sterrick or Brown Sharp, they're like $20. Used, right? Not even a new one. Used $20 for that. Then we got a whole set of screw plates. It's a little giant brand. Uh, it's made by Greenfield Tap and Die. And uh, these are coarse ones, I think. Uh, what is it saying? What does it say? Yeah, it's half 13. I believe that's coarse, right? Anyway, so here's a half 13. There's uh, four screw plates, die stock. I'll have to clean them up. It's still got the case hardening colors on it. Uh, it's not really standing out too much. It might, it might show up a little bit better in the camera. I don't know. Anyway, that, and then uh, it's got a number five uh, tap handle, and it's actually got pretty nice case hardening colors on it. It's in good shape. Well, needs a little bit of lubrication here, but it still moves pretty good. It's a lot better than the little number zero that I ever stored it. I just messed up. <laughs> well, anyway, I'll have to, I'll have to reset that. I closed it too far. So it looks like everything's here, and then, and then some. So we've got all these other dies right here. And these are all USA. I don't know if it's a card on it. That's Greenfield. That's a Greenfield. That's a Greenfield. I can see the crown. And what side? Yeah, that's another Greenfield. So, I don't know if there's supposed to be something else in that spot, or maybe that's just where... Probably there should be a little screwdriver or something, I would think, maybe for adjusting these dies. I'll have to ask Jay, see what he, see what he says about that. So anyway, this whole box of stuff, they sold me for $10. So, when I, when I got that part of it out of it for $10, I was ahead by 10 or excuse me, Oh yeah, I was already ahead ten dollars just by buying this. So I think I come up pretty good here on this. Anyway, that's that's a really nice kit. Everything looks like it's in really good shape. Uh, I need to clean them up still. And the label inside is really good. There's the one on the outside is almost gone, but you know, it's, it's what's on the inside that really matters anyway. Right? So. That, I believe, is just about everything. Yeah, there's still a few more things coming in, but Christmas has been pretty good so far. Anyway, we'll see you guys around.